Hello, I'm Steve Maskery and welcome to Workshop Essentials. In a previous life, many, many years ago, before I had a rather nice crosscut saw, I used to use my table saw for everything, including cross-cutting. And um, I made myself a fairly traditional cross-cut sled, like this. In fact, this is the one. Piece of half-inch ply, fence at the back, a couple of rudders underneath, and a bridge at the front to keep the two halves together when you saw through the baseboard. And um, it doesn't fit anymore because these runners have swollen. Uh, they spent two years in the barn, which didn't do it any favours. It does have a couple of nice features. There's a tunnel guard at the back, so that when I'm holding the workpiece, when the blade comes out at the back end, at the end of the cut, I'm not going to cut my thumbs off. So that protects me from a blade there. And there is a, a guard which drops into some slots like that. So if you've got the workpiece flat on the bed, this simply drops on top of them, which is fine when you're cross-cutting stuff flat. But if you want to tip it upright and cut the narrow edge, then you can't use the guard at all. You've either got to find another way or risk using the saw without a guard. I, I never do that. Even in those days, I didn't do that, and I certainly don't do it now. There is one big disadvantage of a, a crosscut sled like this, and they all suffer from the same problem. And that is the slot made by the blade here gets wider and wider and wider. It gets wider if I use a thicker blade. This is a thin curved blade. If I then use a standard eighth inch blade, that slot gets bigger. Uh, but even if I never change the blade, it still gets bigger because you're creating sawdust all the time and sawdust is abrasive. And that's why you have to replace your zero clearance table saw insert now and again, because the, the, um, the slot at the front gets wider and wider and wider as the sawdust abrades it away. And the same thing happens with a, with a sled like this. So that slot there is now really, I mean, you can drive a bus through that. So, I have come up with a better design. Uh, I'm not suggesting it's original. I dare say lots of people have done something very similar in the past, but this is my version of it. Let me just get that out of the way. It's a, a piece of nine millimeter MDF with a runner on the bottom. And on the top is fixed a, an array of T-track with MDF infills. And the T-track is just very slightly higher than the infills because the T-track is half an inch and the MDF is 12 millimeters. Tiny, tiny difference. But it's better that way than having the MDF higher because at least this way the aluminium doesn't get pulled off. Um, originally, I had these all cut as four-way mitres. And when I came to put it together, it was the most hideous jigsaw you ever did see because my metalworking skills are even worse than my woodworking skills. So I chopped all the mitres off and I've just put them in as uh, square ends and left a hole at each, each intersection. And actually that's uh, beneficial because it means you can drop a uh, T, um, a flange nut or a T bolt in there without having to feed it in from the end, which is a pain if you've already got something blocking the channel. So uh, I can fix anything down anywhere that way. But the thing that sets this apart from other similar sleds is that it's got a zero clearance right hand end. Now if I just show you the end grain, if you like, of the sled, you can see that there is a, a rebate cut or a rabbit if you prefer, cut onto the jig and a matching one cut into this piece on the top, on the right hand edge. And this was originally a little bit wider than it is now. So when I run this through the saw, this edge becomes zero clearance with this blade. Okay, now if I use a, a thicker blade, this will get cut back to that. This is thin curve, if I use a standard blade, that'll get cut back. If I install a, a dado set, it will get cut back even more. But that doesn't matter because it's very easy to replace with a new one, because that is just screwed in place. There's a row of screws down here. 
So this is sacrificial and can easily be replaced when it gets worn out. I've made a fence for it as well. This is my fence. And this is uh, L-shaped. This is all reclaimed timber. This came from uh, a 1930s uh, panelled door. It smells, it smells wonderful. It's got that sort of sweet, musty smell of old houses. And uh, it's L-shaped, so there's a, an upstand piece that supports the mitre track. And then there's the bit that gets clamped down and that's actually fabricated. You could route these slots, but I've fabricated them. So there's a piece of wood, uh, a spacer, and another piece of wood to give me two slots like this. I've got Bristol levers with flange nuts in them. And so now, let me get this the right way around. Uh, this can just slot in at an intersection, like that. like that and then this and there is a little tiny bit of play in this not very much but there's a bit so I do need to check that that is actually square and if that was any square it would be off so there we go these can get parked out of the way. And then I've got um, an aluminium flip stop that slides in there. Now these used to be quite expensive uh, and now they're not. This cost me less than a tenner and it's really very nicely made. Um, it clamps firmly. There is no play in it. It doesn't, um, it doesn't yield sideways. And you can flip it up out of the way, do your cross cutting of one end and then drop it down, reverse your workpiece up to the stop and you get um, your perfect length with two clean ends. Now, I don't think that I shall be using this for cross-cutting very much because I've got a nice big Bosch over there. But th where the scores is for doing things like um, tenon cheeks, not tenon cheeks, tenon shoulders rather. Because the, although there is a trenching facility on that, that you can stop the saw from going right down to the bed of the saw, uh, it bounces a bit and you also get that scoop at the back where it doesn't cut it quite cleanly uh, because it's, on a, it's a, on a pivoting arm. Whereas this, I can set the height, I can lock it off, and I know it's not going to move. And then I can cut all my uh, tenon shoulders and they'll all be dead square all the way around. I've used this already on one job and I have to say it was, it was excellent. It's by far the best way I've ever had of cutting tenon shoulders. So if you're looking for a design for a, a cross-cut sled that can be used in all kinds of ways, because obviously I could clamp this, I could clamp it diagonally if I wanted, or I could clamp, instead of clamping this, just clamp the workpiece to it to get a nice straight edge, for example, if it was all uh, natural edged. There are lots of ways you can clamp stuff to this. Uh, so if you're looking for a design, I would recommend this. I would make this again. And there's nothing that I would change about it, I don't think. Um, originally, I stuck these down with double-sided tape just to see how well it would work. And I've not changed anything other than going around and now they're stuck down with contact adhesive. That's the only thing that I've changed. I need to put a hanging hole in there and in there. And then I've got to find somewhere on the walls to hang it. I'm not quite sure where it's going to go. My walls are a bit full. Uh, but that's, a, that, that's my problem, not yours. <laughs> That's it, my zero clearance cross-cut table saw sled. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, enjoy your workshop. Cheerio.